Take two. Three o'clock in the morning, y'all, and I'm biding my time. Two more, Mr. Waiter, I got a whole lot on my mind. I'm going back to Louisiana to that girl I left behind. Great, great, great. That's a little sample of some music that we're producing here in our little home studio in Corpus Christi, Texas, actually on Padre Island. This is Morgan Baldridge. I'm Don Flint. Uh, it's Don Flint Productions, but we're calling this the Three Dog Studio because <laughs> we have dogs that bark a lot. So you probably hear them barking in the background. Hope you don't. But uh, we just had a inkling to start a little project to do some songs to give out at Christmas time. Morgan did and they came to me and asked me if I'd like to help produce that and my background is in video editing and I thought that maybe I could use my video editor as an audio recording device and uh, produce it that way and that's how we started the whole thing but you remember how we what we did to get started? What was your first inkling to do this? Well I wanted to do an album uh, for my first grandchild. Mm. wanted to give them something a lasting gift and uh, that's what I thought about doing since I'm a musician. Mm -hmm. And you've been a musician all your life, so, but not done, a, not done a lot of recording, is that correct? I've done some recording in the 70s, and it's been a long time since I've done any more. Yeah. Good. Well, anyway, uh, Morgan's my next door neighbor, and we got, we've been fast friends for a couple of years. And he kind of surprised me with that request, and I said, well, why not? You know, I can, I'll take a challenge. <laughs> I'm up for any kind of challenge, and so we got into it. We started fiddling around in the uh, in the little bedroom here. Really, it's not really a studio; it's a bedroom. And uh, started figuring out how we're going to do this, microphone-wise, recording-wise. And uh, first thing I came up with was I can't remember which one it was, but realized pretty quickly that the video editor was not going to be the best for recording audio. So I bought this. Uh, Little Tascam uh, multi track recorder. Uh, got it online and uh, it's fantastic. It's a good machine. And it actually would have worked had we been, our songs be a little simpler perhaps. But the machine does a really nice job. It's got its own microphone. It uh, mixes four, uh, six tracks, stereo, it's got everything. Plays back real nice. And that was a pretty neat deal. But realized that uh, that wasn't going to do what we wanted to do. So therefore, I invested in a, a digital audio workstation, which is something I've been wanting for a long time because of my video editing, doing sound. So I went out and purchased the uh, Magix, Vegas, uh, not Vegas, Samplitude Music Studio, and uh, got this at Best Buy. Never worked with a, a digital audio workstation before. But put it in and started learning it, and thanks to YouTube and all the tutorials, it was easily mastered, and uh, not mastered, but easily we were able to start recording right away. And do you remember the early days? What was our first song? The one That's we just... Back to Louisiana. Okay, that was pretty cool. Yeah. And we got in here, we, um, he plays guitar, bass guitar regular guitar, ukulele as you can see, and a little keyboard once in a while, and I hear a dog barking. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's why it's called Three Dog, by the way. And got in here and we just started fiddling around and uh, put down some tracks, and the first song came out pretty doggone good, as a matter of fact. And uh, we just played a little bit on the ukulele, but right here I'm gonna insert uh, a little bit of that song so you can get a, a taste of it, what it sounded like in studio. So here it is. It's three o'clock in the morning, y'all, and I'm biding my time. Two more, Mr. Waiter, I got a whole lot on my mind. Going back to Louisiana, to that girl I left behind. All right. Oh, I've 
I've been to Memphis, Kansas City too. Never met a woman who could love me like you do. Going you know back to Louisiana to that girl I left behind. She's just my kind of woman. She's just my style. Knocked me off the way she looks me in the eye. I'm going back to Louisiana to that girl I left behind. Live in Shreveport, then she moved. Bet you ten to one she went to Baton Rouge. I'm gonna look her up if you know what I mean. If I have to go as far as New Orleans, if I'm talking to you, honey, you know that I got to find my baby, got to move on down the line. I'm going back to Louisiana to that girl I left behind. was uh, the first song we did and you can tell it's pretty good and we were pretty amazed uh, with very the, well yeah Not how good that good. sounded and well, it's pretty neat you know and uh, we learned pretty quickly that you got to be able to uh, make these songs playable in multiple devices uh, people have different ways of playing music the car there's home stereo tablets their phone and that was one of the first things I learned is we got to balance that sound where it'll sound good everywhere. And also saw that on some tutorials. What made you think uh, that was the one to make it happen? Well, you know, I mentioned the project and uh, you just happened to say that in your past life you had done some of this type of uh, work. You go, oh yeah, really? So you were definitely the man to do it. Well, thank you very much. Uh, actually, in, in video editing, audio is very important. I uh, went to the University of Texas and radio, television, film, and liked audio part of it. Learned a lot about it and uh, always interested in audio. Never worked in the field. so. But audio is a very important part of video production. And, of course, in music production, it's, it's key. It's everything. It's everything. So that's not just... Uh, recording but live shows and everything else so that's kind of cool anyway uh, yeah I felt I had enough background to make it happen I didn't realize what I was gonna have to purchase to get it all to work <laughs> to our to the degree we, we were satisfied with it this project just sucked you right in didn't it it did it tried to yeah and I'm, I'm not I'm very appreciative uh, I had already a, I can see it up here a little Behringer mixer that was on its last leg and as it went along I realized man I, I need a better mixer and I went to uh, Guitar Center and this is not a commercial for them by the way but I went to to them and <laughs> and uh, looked in fact I looked online first to see what was available but uh, the Yamaha uh, it's an MG 12 XU uh, 8 channel I think it's 8 mixer and I wanted a mixer anyway and I got that thing and it is fabulous it uh, really does the job it's it did everything that we wanted oh, it to do very clean sounding it's a uh, it's a nice piece of gear and uh, so we also we're going along with uh, listening to our music on some very inexpensive speakers you can't see them in the shop but they're up on top of the shelf here 
it came from a very cheap stereo and we were using headphones of course well I wasn't talking about the headphones while we were talking about headphones I don't remember I had an old set of headphones that uh, were so old that paint was flaking off the cups and I noticed the artist is standing around with black paint all over his face <laughs> and it was from the headphones well I went out and bought uh, AKGs this is the uh, what model is this K K240s and we bought two of those and man what a difference what a difference that made because it's uh, good headphones in a studio is a must they were they were everything that uh, that I needed them to do I have the very the clarity was outstanding and mm. the comfort is very good too which is really important yeah, we're wearing them right now as a matter of fact I have them on for a long time yeah, we spent many an hour in this little room with the headphones on and you know really no fatigue from it or anything so uh anyway we went on along and realized these little speakers were really we couldn't really listen to our music without going to the car or going to the big stereo and listening to it that way and i just wasn't cutting it so i said well you know it'd be nice to have some studio monitors and uh end up going back to the guitar store and <laughs> yes yeah Suck your right and in. I looked at them online <laughs> I thought they were about 150 or 200 dollars a pair but it turned out they're each and but I ended up with the KRK Rocket 5s studio monitors and they are really really good they're a real studio monitor self-powered a uh, very clean good, good clean sound and made a big difference when we needed to monitor and listen to our our mixes so and got into the mix well you know sometimes you want to you want to hear things in your headphones and then other times it's good to hear them through the speakers because you're getting two different perspectives exactly and a lot of difference there uh, going along the uh, after we started doing more and more songs uh, I had to learn how to mix uh, I knew nothing about mixing music mix, mixing sound but again, the tutorials I found were very, very helpful. And one of the guys, one thing I remember the most from one of them was uh, one of the guys said, if it sounds good, it is good. And I said, hmm, that's an interesting way of looking at it. You know, and we try to do it that way from the, sound, the standpoint of sound. Is it pleasing? You know, is it making us entertaining? Is it entertaining to us? Is it sounding good? Can you hear all the elements of the sound? And uh, as I was brand new into this uh, music studio program, I had to learn so much. And I probably still only know about 10% or maybe less of the program as far as what it'll do. But we certainly got a, some good stuff out of it. And uh, yeah. in, in fact, you'll be able to hear these, all the songs, because Morgan has a, a channel of his own. And he's going to put these songs on his YouTube channel, which y'all can listen to at some point. It's um, Morgan Baldridge. I think it's the channel, right? Yes. Morgan Boulder channel. And several of the songs are already up there. And eventually the whole album will be up there. I don't think I showed the album. No, you didn't show the album yet. We actually, uh, can you hold that? Yeah. Since he was giving this out as a gift to his friends and family, we decided to go and do it right and do it as much as like commercial as possible. So we got album art done inside with the list of songs actually just a, a story about how we uh, come about to do this and a little bit about his past in the disc itself if you can see there is a compact disc we had that done at a local studio I duplicated them and on the back we have another picture and that was who's uh, art who did the picture so you're Daughter-in-law? On the inside, my daughter-in-law did the artwork. Artwork, yes. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yeah, she's a commercial artist, and she was interested in being uh, involved in the project. I think she did a wonderful job. That's pretty neat looking. We were able to print all the papers here and, and load them up, and came out with a really nice little pros project there that some people have said that it looks like a commercial. <laughs> You had some feedback from uh, the people you sent them out to? Yeah, uh, one of my good friends that looks just like store-bought. 
<laughs> that is cool. Yeah. That's something that you... That's pretty neat. What did you learn from this process? It was an arduous process. It took a, a, a lot of thought. Uh, a lot of t preparation time because... You know, as an artist, you don't want to come into the studio and then go, well, what am I going to do? You want to have it all thought out in advance. True. Because you're taking up the audio engineer's time, and his time is valuable. So, And you don't want to bore him to tears. So I was never try, bored. Or try not to, anyway. Toward the end, I was getting a little tired, a little weary, but you know, we had a goal in mind. We knew where we were heading, so it wasn't that bad. Yeah, when you're, when you're using a lot of multiple instruments in a song and you're doing it all yourself, you have to, uh, you know, in, in what order that you're going to put down the tracks, uh, where they make sense to you, uh, to help you in the, uh, in the progression of the song. Mm -hmm. And we had some, one of our songs had like over 20 tracks, I think 22, 23 tracks. Right. And, but, you know, as I went along, you know, it was toward the end, so, wasn't it as big a burden as you'd think it would be because they just it's there you can use them and and to edit or whatever it's nice to have that flexibility to be able to put all that stuff together and uh, so we both learned I learned how to mix music I learned how to master music I learned how to edit some of these tracks he uh, has been playing his whole life but still there's a lot of arranging going on and practicing, and that was very appreciative that when he came yeah. in the studio, he was always ready. And we could just go right to it. We'd lay down tracks pretty quick sometimes. Sometimes very quickly. Sometimes quickly and sometimes, yeah, sometimes not so not. quickly. <laughs> <laughs> now, we did bring in uh, two outside people to help us. We brought in a drummer, and you'll hear some drums on some of these tracks. And we brought in uh, my brother-in-law, Johnny Cotton, played harmonica on one of the songs, and you'll hear that too. That's called Blues Muddle. Did a wonderful job, and that song screamed for a harmonica. Screaming for a harmonica. But all the other sounds, other than the drums and harmonica, we made. I did some of the percussion, you know. It didn't sound good, did it? And some other thing, little tools we had, the egg shaker. And it was just a lot of fun to do that, so. What was the funniest thing that happened during this process? Oh gosh, uh, the funniest thing that happened. Uh, if anything was funny, what do you mean not a man? <laughs> <laughs> the dogs barking, maybe. <laughs> well, uh, uh, gosh, uh, turning off the fan. No. Oh, uh, <laughs> make sure that we didn't have ambient sound, and uh, you know, making sure we had a flat, flat sound, and nothing got in the way there, but. Uh, uh, yeah. Sometimes I would just make uh, some mistakes, and uh, all you could do is laugh about it and say, "Let's do it again." Do it again. So, there was. Let's talk about places. microphones. We, uh, he had a very good dynamic mic when we started, and kind of wanted to have a condenser. And so halfway through the project, he bought this mic you see here in front of us. In fact, we're using it today, and uh, it made such a difference. Tell us about what we did next. Yeah, this is a, an Aston Origin mic, and uh, we've mentioned Guitar Center several times, but uh, they, you can pick up some great used items from them. And this was uh, actually in Detroit, and it was very easy to, to order it online. I'd done my research, and the Aston Origin was the looked like the microphone that uh, fitted my needs the best. Uh, if you're going to do this type of thing, you really do need a condenser mic. Because it's going to make a, a tremendous difference. Mm -hmm. And we actually went back. All the songs that we had used the other mic on, we actually went back. And we re-recorded. Retorted. You know, all the vocal tracks. Vocal again. So that, but it's easy to do. That's what's neat about multi-track recording. You can go back in and make changes. Absolutely. Replace tracks. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. And there's a lot of good programs. We're talking about Samplitude here. And... Maybe it's Magix is the parent company, but there's a lot of good digital audio work workstations. Some of them are free. I think Audacity is free. There's a free version of Pro Tools. It's a simplified version. 
there's a, a multitude of really good digital audio workstations anywhere from free all the way up to thousands of dollars. Uh, you don't have to spend a lot of money to get a good digital audio workstation. Uh, Cakewalk is another one. Band Lab is another really right, good. Right. A lot of professionals use that one. And it's actually a free, currently it's a free program. <coughs> and uh, But something to think about if you're thinking about building a studio, be sure and get a, a digital audio workstation and uh, makes your life very simple. Depends on what you're doing in your studio. Now this studio is small so it makes it it works best for like one artist, and uh, I can attest to at, that <laughs> at a time. Uh, we were lucky that the audio, the uh, room was dead enough that it didn't cause a lot of reflective problems. There's a lot of stuff in the room that absorbs the sound, and uh, not dead and not and not too lively. I mean, we were it, we thought it sounded pretty good, and that made a different to, difference too. You can treat your room any way you want to, and the more you treat it, the Probably the clearer the sound will be, but uh, anyway, what do you think about uh, the way the sound, the room sounded? Uh, again, there was enough uh, enough in the room to absorb a lot of the sound. It didn't bounce around, and that's really important when you're recording. Um, no, it, it really uh, depends on how much money you want to spend. Yeah. There are reflectors that you can purchase. You can buy deadening effectors. Uh, we went into this with a with a not really a budget in mind, but it just kept sucking us in. Mm -hmm. And you know, with, with what we ended up with as far as uh, equipment, it did the job. It really did. Yep. You, it, you don't have to spend a ton of money to come up with a wonderful project. Exactly right. All right, along these lines too, what was the scariest thing that happened? Well, Don, as you know, you almost lost one of my songs. Here it comes. Here it comes. Yeah, I it away somewhere and couldn't find it, and he had a sleepless night. Couldn't, I actually couldn't find it. <laughs> what happened was, is and this can happen to anybody, by the way. I accidentally erased all the root uh, files for one of our songs toward the end. I don't know how it happened, but well, I do, but I went in to edit and all the skeleton was there and there was no sound, no files, they were gone. I said, oh, he's going to kill me because we're going to have to re-record re all these tracks. It was a complicated song. That, it took a lot of tracks. I said, oh boy. So that night I did not sleep very well. But during the night I remembered, wait a minute, maybe it's in the... Uh, What's that file called? The... I don't know where you found it. <laughs> oh, it was in your trash file. Yeah, the, uh, it, it, recycled. it recycled. Recycled bin. It went actually, yeah. when I erased it, I didn't erase it. It went to the recycle bin. Next morning, the first thing I got to do when I got up, I went in and looked, and sure enough, all the files are right there. Transferred them back. Solved. My wife told me, don't tell him. Best off, best off, don't tell him. Don't tell him, but, but, he, he's had gonna, to, but he had to. He had to tell I him. spilled the beans. <laughs> <laughs> that was scary. <laughs> that scared me. Because I knew you were going to kill me. <laughs> no, nah, you wouldn't have, I guess, no, really no. killed me, but you might have. No, I just would have been upset for a few days, and then we would have got back to work. What was the most challenging for you during this? Now, we spent oh, about gosh. five months, six months, five months, I guess. About five and a half on months. On and off. And, yeah. but now I realize how, how much goes into making an album, how much it takes. I probably didn't have that appreciation before. Just when you go and buy an album, well, they must have spent a few days, you know, recording this. But man, there's a lot to it, a lot more than I realized. Well, it's, uh, again, as a single artist, if you play multiple instruments and you're trying to get as, <coughs> excuse me, as full of sound as you can, you know, you want to try to get these instruments in your recording uh, where they make sense. And again, it's uh, the arrangement of, of the songs. Uh, if you're doing cover songs, you want to make them your own as much as possible. So you're listening to the original versions, and then you're deciding, you know, well, how can I make that my own? And what are my own uh, musical limitations? You know, what, what am I capable of in my vocal limitations? What, what can I sing? Mm. So you just kind of break down that song and uh, try to make it your own as much as you can. 
uh, and, the, and the arranging is the, is the most difficult. In, in what order do you put the tracks in where they make sense where you can build on each other? And that would come out sounding good. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when I tried to sing that one song? Back yes, to New I York, do. Back to Blues. No, it was... He, uh, he called it singing. Yeah, it's called... It's a train song. What's it called? Uh, City of New Orleans. City of New Orleans. I really like that song. And... Uh, Maybe I'll play some for you here in a second. But I said, man, I, can, I think I could sing that song just as good as he did. So I came in the studio when he wasn't here and hooked up the mic, and I started singing along with the other tracks we'd had, took his tracks out, put my voice in. And, uh, you know, it wasn't that bad, really, but uh, he couldn't listen to it. <laughs> but it really really sounded pretty cool to me. But uh, it's... But I realize how hard and we're always a legend in our own minds. How hard it is to <laughs> sing, sing along these songs. I mean, they're just—it just takes a lot to sing well. And he told me, you "Got to sing from the diaphragm," you know. And I said, "Okay, you know, I'll try that." But that was funny, though. Uh, let's see, what else can we talk about here? Losing my mind here. Let's talk about supporting local music definitely get out there and support your local live venues um, your, your local musicians your local bands are out there you know trying to be heard especially the uh, the groups that uh, are playing uh, their own music and uh, just trying to break through and the only way that that can happen is if they you know the, the people have to go out to the live venues to, to hear these bands mm -hmm. and then you just have a lot of a uh, lot of bands that are you know, playing locally on the weekends, they have no aspiration to to uh, to tour or to record, but they're just having fun playing on the weekends. And you've got a lot of musicians with a lot of talent out there with many years of experience, and they you're going to hear some wonderful music. So get out there and and support your live venues. Mm -hmm. Definitely, and the stores, uh -huh. and and your local, local music stores also, especially whenever your mom and pops. You, whenever you can. Yep. We support uh, local store, uh, Clausen's Music. Bought a guitar there, sitting over there. Love the guitar. Great store. If you're here locally, don't hesitate to come see Clausen's Music. They'll treat you right. Also, I happen to like Guitar Center because the first time I walked in that store and went into the Pro, uh, pro Audio room, I was blown away. I said, "This is. I'm going to move in here. I love it. <laughs> They had so much stuff in there that I couldn't afford at the time. But that's where I bought some of my gear. And uh, also online, you know, I, I've got some stuff online. So there's, if you're thinking about building a home studio, do either search, uh, start off small if you need to. You can do it in your home. If you're a musician, you want to do, down, do your own tracks, it's very simple to do. And basically all you need is a computer. I happen to use a, a DAW, let me turn that back on. Uh, you can use a, an interface like this. This is the digital interface that you can use and it'll do the same thing that that mixer will do one track at a time. You can hook it up to a monitor. You can It takes your uh, analog source and makes it digital. Go right in your computer and uh, so don't hesitate to do that. Well, and that's really the purpose. This uh, podcast today is we wanted to talk about how we went from zero, no knowledge at all about this. In my case, for sure, he was a musician already. But in my case, I'm trying to be a audio technician, audio engineer with zero knowledge and in six months produced a pretty nice album that is very did entertaining. A great, did a great job. Look, you don't have to know a lot in the beginning, but if you're willing to learn, you're going to come out with a wonderful product. Yep. And, and Don's a great example of that. Good. My last question. I'm not asking, this is not an interview, but we're both asking each other. We had fun doing this. Do you want to do another one? Maybe. <laughs> I think we'll give it a rest for a little while. It was uh, an extraordinary process, and uh, 
stressful at times, but a lot of fun. Yep. And uh, it was the finished fun. product was worth it all. It really was. But give yourself some time and don't get down on yourself. Yeah. And I've already... It, make it work in the long run. Yeah. I've already heard of some musicians around the area here. We're on Padre Island in Corpus Christi, Texas, that they want to do a few uh, recording sessions in my studio. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. That's what it's here for. And it's easy to do, fun to do. I'd love to see somebody come along does a sample or demo here and then becomes a star that would be that would be my dream a young person part perhaps so i might even learn guitar and, and be that one myself because i'm a little old though that's the only thing so thank you so much thanks to everybody that's right. watched this video uh if you want to build a studio you can we're a perfect example of how to do it and uh go out there and do it you won't regret it Thanks, Don. Thank you, Morgan. Great job. Thank you. Bye, y'all. I thought y'all would like to hear one of the songs that we did, one of my favorite songs that was on the album. Again, you can see, hear all the album on uh, Morgan Baldridge channel. But uh, this is a sample of our work. See what you think. Enjoy.
riding on the city of New Orleans. Illinois Central Monday morning rail. Fifteen cars and fifteen restless riders. Three conductors, twenty-four sacks of mail. All along the southbound Odyssey, the train rolls out of Kankakee and moves past houses, farms, and fields. Oh, passing trains that have no name and switch yards full of old black men and the graveyards full of rusted automobiles. Good morning, America, how are ya? Say, don't you know me, I'm your native son. I'm the train they call the city of New Orleans. I'll be gone five hundred miles when the day is done. Dealing card games with an old man on the club car. Penny a point, ain't nobody keeping score. Pass that paper bag that holds the bottle. Ah, fuel the wheels rumbling beneath the floor. And the sons of Pullman porters And the sons of engineers Ride their father's magic carpets Made of steel All oh, mothers with their babes asleep Rocking to the gentle beat And the rhythm of the rails is all they feel Good morning in America, how are ya? Say, don't you know me? I'm your native son. I'm the train they call the city of New Orleans. I'll be gone 500 miles before the day is done. Nighttime on the city of New Orleans Changing cars in Memphis, Tennessee Halfway home, we'll be there by morning Through the Mississippi darkness rolling down to the sea but all the towns and the people seem to fade into a dark dream And the steel rails still ain't heard the news A conductor sings the song again The passengers will please refrain This train's got to disappear in the railroad blue Good night, America, how are you? Say, don't you know me? I'm your native son. I'm the train they call the city of New Orleans. I'll be gone 500 miles before the day is done. I'll be gone 500 miles for the day is done I'll be gone 500 miles for the day is done Never be the 
same I was delivered from a world of heartache heartache and pain I cried Lord have mercy, mercy fell like rain, oh, Lord you know my heart was also troubled, I was afraid, so afraid. Stop raging in my heart Resting on the cross he made Ooh, yeah. I cry Lord have mercy Mercy fell like rain I'll see his face when I arrive At the last trumpet sound He will wipe the tears from my eyes Ooh, Lord I Cry. Lord have mercy, mercy fell like rain. I cry, Lord have mercy, mercy fell like rain. Lord have mercy, mercy fell like rain.